Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. We travel through history's corridors, illuminating Afrocentric narratives. Support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Your subscription is a great start, but do hit the bell for notifications so you know when we have new episodes. Share our videos and visit our website sankofastorybooks.com for stories, biographies, Afrocentric nursery rhymes and other resources for children. Together can change the negative narratives about us. Have you ever pondered the psychological landscape of those Africans who, throughout history, aligned with colonial forces, betraying their own people for personal gain? This very mindset, distressingly, is alive and well today, embodied by figures such as Kemi Badenoch. Her relentless efforts to curry favor with conservative elements in the UK starkly illustrate this distressing legacy. In a recent public statement that could only be described as a brazen act of historical revisionism, Kemi Badenoch has claimed that slavery was not a significant factor in Britain's ascent to global economic dominance. According to her, the monumental wealth accumulated during the empire's height was simply the result of benign factors like sunshine, rainbows, and a shared love of crumpets among the colonies. This raises the question, did the extensive networks of canals throughout the British empire build themselves? Were the mills and factories bustling with activity, magically self-operating? Did sugar, a cornerstone of British wealth, spontaneously generate from cane plants, cheerfully humming Broadway tunes? It's crucial to remember. Coerced labor in the form of slavery and colonization is not only morally reprehensible, but was economically a pillar of colonial wealth expansion. And yet, figures like Badenoch would have us believe humans are mere cogs in a vast wealth creation apparatus, echoing the dehumanizing logic of the enslavers and colonizers of her ancestors. It's true, the exploitation strategies of the British Empire were multifaceted. The British excelled in exploiting market loopholes manipulating commodities and outright theft of resources. However, to trivialize or ignore the role that forced labor played in building the British Empire is akin to claiming that you can make salt fish without salt. Moreover, Badenoch has lauded Britain for its role in abolishing slavery, expecting perhaps a round of applause for ceasing a practice that should have never been started. It is analogous to giving accolades to a thief for returning a wallet they stole a decade earlier, especially when they have already financed a luxurious lifestyle with its contents. Crucially, the shadows cast by the legacy of slavery still loom large. Ignoring or whitewashing these aspects of the past does not eliminate them. While Britain can indeed be proud of its many other achievements and innovations, from industrial advancements to, yes, even from the production. Acknowledging the grim parts of its history is essential. This acknowledgement doesn't diminish Britain's accomplishments. Rather, it provides a fuller, more honest context. It also helps us make the connection between colonization and neocolonization. The next time someone attempts to attribute the success of the British Empire solely to positive vibes and Sony dispositions, it's vital to recall the suffering endured by those who labored under a far harsher sun, a suffering that figures like Kemi Badinok seem all too willing to forget.